Hey, and today we're going to talk about the spinal nerves, those cables branching out to all areas of your body that bring sensory information into the central nervous system and send motor commands out of the central nervous system. First, we're going to recap on the organization of the spinal cord here. The big picture was of that being a butterfly-shaped region of gray matter where the cell bodies of neurons are located, surrounded by white matter myelinated axons going up and down the spinal cord in those ascending and descending tracks. Within the gray matter, distinct groups of neurons carrying out specific functions were located in specific regions, that is the somatic motor nuclei, in the ventral horn, and interneurons receiving sensory input in the dorsal horn. The actual sensory neurons resided in the dorsal root ganglia outside the spinal cord, and their axons entered the spinal cord through the dorsal root. The axons of motor neurons exited out of the ventral root. So looking at this picture of the spinal cord and roots in a freshly dissected cadaver, note the dorsal horns extend out to the periphery, whereas the ventral horns do not and are also close to your anterior fissure. That means these are your ventral roots going out and these are your dorsal roots coming in. That means this is the dorsal root ganglia. So you have this information or electrical activity coming in through this wire into that dorsal horn region and you have electrical activity going out through those ventral roots. So past that dorsal root ganglia here you have these large cables with axons carrying afferent and efferent information and those cables are what we speak of when we're referring to the spinal nerves. So today we're going to ask what is a nerve, which we just answered, and we're going to look at the organization of peripheral nerve tissue and how these nerves are going to branch out to innervate the peripheral target organs. And then related to that we have the concept of a dermatome and related to the concept of a dermatome, we have the concept of referred pain. So the nerves are branching out from the spinal cord and are named according to the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, or sacral vertebrae. Since the first nerve, C1, arises from above the first cervical vertebrae, there are actually eight cervical vertebrae instead of seven. Each of these named nerves, C5, C6, C7, C8, will branch off and go on to innervate specific regions of the body. So an important point to remember always is that the nerves are carrying both sensory and motor innervation. And when I say sensory, it was talking about innervation of the skin in the case of the somatic pathway. And for the motor pathway, we're talking about innervation of muscles as well as glands in the case of the autonomic system. So if you're looking at a peripheral nerve such as this, you'll have some of those wires or axons reaching out to its peripheral target for innervation, and some of those axons included in that nerve will be bringing in information from the periphery. That those afferent and efferent fibers are gonna be packaged into the nerve in a way similar to what we saw in the muscles. So the fibers in this case are the axons of the neurons, and the myelin sheath, which covers the fiber or axon, is itself covered by a loose connective tissue known as the endoneurium. And then a group of fibers is packaged together into a fascicle by a connective tissue layer named the perineurium. And then a group of fascicles is grouped together by the epineurium, which covers the entire nerve. So this is almost the exact same organization and nomenclature as we saw with the muscle, just substitute neurium for mesium. Also note, blood vessels will be running within the nerve in a manner similar to what we saw in the muscles. So next here, we're going to move farther out to look at this cable that carries signals or information to and from particular locations. Specifically, it's carrying information to the axon terminals of motor neurons to particular muscles, whereas the area of skin roughly around that muscle is going to be innervated by the dendrites of sensory neurons from that same nerve. So here we're going to look at the pattern of how these nerves are distributed. So the ventral and dorsal roots are going to merge to form the spinal nerve which will then be distributed to particular regions of the body. That very first branch this nerve takes once exiting the intervertebral foramen 
is where it splits into the so-called dorsal and ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus innervates the muscle and skin around that corresponding vertebral region. You're going to notice the dorsal ramus is much smaller than the ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus innervates the skin on the back and your back muscles. The skin on your back is less densely innervated, that is, there's less receptors per square inch there. The muscles there also do not contain a great number of motor units because the muscles on the back do not require so much fine control. The bottom line is the smaller dorsal ramus innervates the posterior region of the body, which is less innervated compared to the area of the body controlled by the ventral ramus. The ventral ramus innervates the skin and muscles on the front of your body. In the thoracic regions, it's fairly simple. The nerve branches out through and spreads across roughly the area where it came from across the body. Your thoracic spinal nerves are a little like the case of a snake where the innervation is roughly uniform across the length of the spinal cord. But the presence of our four limbs make it a little more complicated. Those muscles are more finely controlled. There's a lot more of them and the skin around is generally more sensitive, especially on your hands. So all that means is there are going to be a lot more fibers going to and from those limbs from a shorter section of the spinal cord. So if you look into your body, you can look at the upper limbs as the east coast and all that activity there going on, and then your lower limbs as the west coast with all that activity going on there, and in the thoracic region as those flyover states that we don't know the names of. So there is greater innervation in the limbs, and to make things more confusing, the nerves exiting the spinal cord branch and network with each other, form what is called the nerve plexus. So the ventral ramus of spinal nerves, say C2, C3, C4, etc., are going to merge with the spinal nerves C4 and C5, and then diverge away from them, and so on in a complicated way I'm not going to require you to know. But the nerves you do have to know, such as the radial nerve or ulnar or median nerve of the arm, will all come from, in a very complex way, from this brachial plexus. And as they move away from the plexus and toward their target, each individual nerve will eventually branch off into smaller branches and innervate particular patches of skin and in particular muscles. So the nerves leaving the spinal cord eventually branch out to reach their specific targets. Every inch of your skin is covered by a specific sensory neurons responsible for detecting stimuli on that particular swath of skin. So this makes a nice visual image of the peripheral distribution of nerves. Each stripe you see on that figure represents a dermatome, that is, an area of skin supplied by a particular spinal nerve. That stripe roughly corresponds to the spinal cord level, although it gets very complicated in the limb region. These dermatomes have been mapped out and actually visualized not only in the cartoon coloring of these dermatomes here, but in the patterns of infection observed in shingles. This is due to a virus which has evaded your immune system by hiding out in the dorsal root ganglia of a particular spinal segment. And then for whatever reason, a weakened immune system or something, the virus becomes reactivated and spreads a path of infection along the area of skin which that nerve innervates. So in this case, the virus was hiding somewhere along the C2, C3 segment in those dorsal root ganglia on the right side. And that infected area represents that particular patch of skin innervated by those nerves. And these ner dermatomes were actually mapped out over the years by recording areas of numbness in patients who had experienced injuries to specific spinal roots. So now these dermatomes can help pinpoint the level of spinal injuries. For instance, numbness in all dermatomes below T1 indicate a spinal cord injury at T1. The other more complex clinical significance of dermatome is the concept of referred pain. Most of the sensory inner innervation of your internal soft organs are within pathways that function to maintain homeostasis and so are not a pathway that results in conscious perception of that information. However, those sensory fibers enter the spinal cord along the same fibers that innervate a particular patch of skin, which we are conscious of. And so many people are familiar with the idea of a person feeling searing pain down his left arm that turns out to be associated with a heart attack. So in this image, we see sensory fibers coming from the heart and into the spinal cord 
alongside fibers originating from that left side dermatome of the same spinal cord segment. So these visceral afferent fibers may have extreme activity when there's something seriously wrong with the heart. So the hypothesis is that there is spillover or crosstalk between the visceral and somatic efferent fibers and it is consciously experienced as pain alongside that dermatome. It's all the same phenomena that might be occurring when somebody feels pain above and to the left of their belly button due to an appendicitis attack. So the three examples are the clinical applications of dermatomes, shingles, the level of spinal cord injury, and referred pain. And as I mentioned before, the dermatome patterns of the limb is much more complex than on your trunk. Here we see a patch of skin innervated by the axillary nerve and the radial nerve more distally. And that's the sensory division of that nerve, but nerves also have motor information traveling along the same nerve to and from a common destination. So if I showed you the patch of skin, the axillary nerve innervates, and you remember what muscle is under there, you can make a guess that the axillary nerve innervates the deltoid muscle. The radial nerve dermatome is on the back of the arm and forearm. So if I asked you which class of muscles the radial nerve innervates, you can make an educated guess and tell me it would be the extensor muscles of the elbow and wrist. It is not always that straightforward, but there is a rough correspondence between the patch of skin innervated by the sensory neurons and the muscles underneath innervated by the motor neurons. So the innervation of the anterior portion of your arm by the musculocutaneous, the median, and ulnar nerve will also roughly correspond to the above dermatome. And all those upper limb nerves are coming off the brachial plexus, one of the main ones, and the lower limbs we're going to see are coming from the lumbar and sacral plexus. The lumbar plexus gives rise to the nerves that are going to cover the anterior surface of the legs. So you can see the femoral artery running down the front of the leg, very obviously here. And just to the side of it right there is your femoral nerve. So your femoral nerve covers your quads for the most part and your obturator nerve actually covers your inner thigh with all those adductor muscles. So that's the anterior surface of your leg. Your posterior surface is covered by nerves from the sacral plexus, the main one being your sciatic nerve, which exits the pelvic cavity through the obturator foramen, deep to all those glute muscles. The sciatic nerve will branch off into your tibia and fibula nerves, which are going to cover your hamstrings, on the back of your leg there, as well as your lower leg flexors for your tibia and your dorsi flexors for your common peroneal. So some of these are more complicated than others, but in a general way you should be able to relate the dermatomes of the upper and lower limbs with the underlying muscles. And one last thing about dermatomes on your head, some of the cervical nerves are innervating certain patches around your neck and head as shown here but also notice that some of those nerves are not named C they're rather V and more importantly trigeminal and so that'll bring us to cranial nerves and their innervation next time see you later